Hello there, welcome back to another Weeb in video. Today's video, we are going to be going into week eight. Damn, week eight already, bro. It's, it's been a blur. It's been a freaking blur. Um, week eight, fantasy football rankings, receivers, and running backs. If you're new to this uh, kind of videos, if you're new to this format, how I do things, I make it pretty clear that the first 20 ranked from running backs and receivers you're gonna start let's be realistic unless you have a god squad which is possible and there's an alternative that i provide which i'll get into unless you have a god squad you're gonna start them automatically if they're in the top 20. so what we do is for running backs we go 21 through 40 because 40 past 40 is really rough um and then for receivers we go 21 through 50 because receivers are much more deep and then after we rank uh you know the respective start sits for all those names I say the three, my three favorite starts of the week for 1 through 10, 11 through 20, 21 through 30, 31 through 40, and for receivers, also 41 through 50, because there are people with God squads out there, so maybe you should just, I don't know, start some of the three or not. You could just listen to an opinion. Also, there are daily fantasy players, I'm sure, so without further ado, week eight rankings. Uh, let's just dive right into it. So skipping to 21 James Conner at Minnesota Um, I would say start as Long as you know that he's not limited because if, if for whatever reason he's limited or he's playing really hurt That's obviously a question mark, but if he's not limited I'm recording this on Wednesday. This video will be out on Thursday. So you'll see the reports by then probably maybe um, On Friday or Saturday, you'll know for sure though I would start him against Minnesota. I think that could be a high-scoring game with DeAndre Hopkins back as well. It seems like that offense got into much more rhythm, and it's amazing what one guy can help do to a team. Tony Pollard, I would definitely start, I think, with Zeke being limited, and he maybe he's out. I don't know. I doubt it, but maybe he is. Uh, Tony Pollard is going to get a much bigger uh, workload, and that means more catches more runs more touchdown opportunities maybe maybe zeke plays but he only takes goal line i don't know but i think regardless tony pollard could get some volume gus edwards didn't know he played last week um when i made my when i recorded my video on wednesday um there was no reports of him well i i shouldn't say reports of him playing but it, no one was sure if he was gonna play if anything it was on the doubtful side um so i did say start Kenyon drake assuming gus edwards would be out hashtag rip anyone who started Kenyon drake but anyway, if Edwards, Gus Edwards indeed indeed does play his normal volume like he did last week, which he should, um, I know that he didn't practice on Tuesday, so that's why I'm bringing this up. Then you shouldn't start him, but if he's fine, ready to go, start him. Touchdowns on touchdowns, opportunities. Michael Carter, I actually wouldn't start him because you don't... I mean, I know Robert Sala just said today they're going to take it slow with James Robinson, but... Until you find out for sure what that workload looks like, even even in the first week back, I would probably hold off. Granted, if you need to start running back and you're desperate, yeah, you could throw in Michael Carter as your flex. But I know I know that Chicago just went off against New England D, but that doesn't happen very often. New England D is pretty disciplined. Uh, Najee Harris bench when you can, if you can. Granted, he's an automatic ten points. It feels like, but. Against Phillies D, they're really good, and Najee's nothing more than a than a low end flex play, mid flex play depending on how your roster looks, I guess. But he's yeah, just not good this season. Uh, Steelers O line is is not it. David Montgomery against Dallas D, I'm benching. Dallas D is actually really good. They've been proving it since last season and this season. Nothing's changed. Still really solid. Tell Algier, Algier, I don't know how to pronounce that. I would preferably bench Carolina's D. They're not great, but I feel like they're not terrible. And Atlanta's offense, I feel like they... It's, it's amazing because sometimes it looks like they can get it going. Sometimes it looks like they can't. I feel like you're playing with fire almost. If you need to start him, I guess you can. But I, he'll probably get like somewhere 10 to, tw 10 to 12 carries. I'm, I'm just good on that. Darrell Henderson, I'm going to bench. Uh... I just don't think he's looked solid. Granted, he's missed some games, but even with Cam Akers out last week, it's just, I didn't see it. Jamal Williams, you only start Jamal if... I mean, you can start him if Swift plays because he's still going to be a touchdown uh, 
person. Touchdown esque. Yeah, regardless, you get what I'm trying to say. He could still get touchdowns even if DeAndre Swift does play because he gets that goal line work. Um, granted, if DeAndre Swift doesn't play, Jamal Williams locked and loaded running back two. Uh, Melvin Gordon, bench. Everyone on Denver, Cortland Sutton hasn't been playing well either. Everyone on Denver, and I mean everyone, is just not not an ideal play. Uh, Don Foreman, bench. Chuba Hubbard. If you had to start one of them, I would start Chuba. He did get the touchdown. I don't even. I don't think Dante Foreman got a touchdown. I know. I know Chubb did. He actually had 15 points in PPR, which is pretty solid. Brad Robinson. I actually like him more than Dante and Chuba. He gets guaranteed volume. They clearly like running him downhill. Uh, Khalil Herbert. Like David Montgomery bench. James Robinson. Wait and see. If you have to start him, start him. But wait. You got to wait and see how how this is gonna work probably well as the games go on but i'm guessing yeah it'll probably be like a five to ten carry kind of first game see how he does and then as as the weeks progress he'll probably get a much bigger workload that's my guess kareem hunt against cincy yeah it's just the nick chubb show you know and that's nothing against kareem hunt nick chubbs is that good and i would bench kareem latavius murray bench aj Dillon bench i mean that it, it could be a high scoring game if green bay pulls their head out of their behind but it's very unlikely from obviously what we've constantly just seen so i would try to bench damien harris touchdown dependent but uh, again i i just bench a lot of these names man antenna gibson actually could be a sneaky start just because he actually looked solid you know spelling brian robinson and then eventually getting the touches because he had the hot hand he just looked like he was you know, seeing the holes well, pushing through, making defenders miss. So, Turner Gibson is actually, I don't think, a terrible start. Um, but yeah, my favorite running backs from 1 through 10, 11 through 20, and so on and so forth. I will, let's look at it right now. Derek Henry against Houston. That's going to be a, oof. Okay, so my three favorite are probably going to be. Nick Chubb against Cincy. I have a hard time believing he's not going to just have a wreckage going on. Uh, Derek Henry against Houston. And then... Who's 10? Joe Mixon. Okay, so we got Derek Henry, Nick Chubb. And then we're going to go Saquon against Seattle. I feel like that could be a really high-scoring game. 11. We're going to go with Travis Etienne. Uh, we're going to go with... If DeAndre Swift plays, you have to go Swift. He's just so he's just too he's too good. Um and who's 20? Yeah, it's military. And Raheem Moster is probably gonna be a phenomenal start this week because Detroit's defense is not good. And then 21 through 30, Tony Pollard. Uh not high on Najee Harris at all, but compared to all these running backs, you know he's gonna get you 10 points. So Tony Pollard. Uh Tony Pollard. Tony Pollard and Najee Harris. And Gus Edwards, I mean, I know he's against Tampa's D, but that just screams touchdown city. Ravens offense is too potent. 31 through 40, uh, Brian Robinson Jr., um, AJ Dillon, maybe, and Antonio Gibson. And we're not even going to go through 41 through 50. Just to give you reference, look at those names, man. You're not starting any of those guys. Stop playing. So let's go to receivers. Looking at receivers here, um, skipping to 20, of course. Uh, 21, Christian Kirk. Now, I'm going to bench Christian Kirk. I actually think Denver's defense is elite. It's I don't even think it's you can even argue against it. For as bad as their offense is and as much as they punt it, the defense just holds it down, and they, they are the only reason why they even have two wins. But they can only do so much. They, it's hard for them to put up points on the board because, you know, they're a defense. It's not their job. Christian, uh, no. Yeah. Devontae Smith. Devonta Smith. I would probably say flex play. Nothing more than that this week because Pittsburgh D is actually good. And they just held the Dolphins to, I believe, 16 points. I know they got destroyed on by the Bills, but that doesn't happen very often to where their defense just blunders that hard. Um, granted, he could, you know, go off because Eagles are just that good, but... 
I would say flex play lower end this week. Mari Cooper against Cincy. That's probably going to be a start. You know, he's just proven time and time again that he's going to be a very important piece of that offense. And with Nick Chubb getting it going like he is, Mari Cooper is not bad at all. Uh, DJ Moore against Atlanta. That actually, with PJ Walker starting, clearly looking to go to him. I actually would say, yeah, you, you should probably start him against Atlanta. Atlanta D is not, is not good. Brandon Cooks against Tennessee. I'm good. Uh, I would rather not. Uh, Brandon Ayuk against the Rams. You know, he's been playing well the past two weeks. I I'll give him that. Um, Rams D is going to be a little tough, though. So I would say lower end flex play. I prefer not to start him, but not a bad start, to be honest. Uh, Curtis Samuel. Hmm. I would prefer to bench for sure, actually. Yeah, I, I would prefer to bench Curtis Samuel. It seems like... Uh, T uh, Taylor Heineke Tyler is I think it's Taylor yeah whatever um, he seems to look at Terry scary Terry a lot more than scary Terry yeah. <laughs> I'm rev I mean I'm pretty sure people still call him scary Terry but when I think of scary Terry I think of Terry Rozier from basketball NBA um, but yeah maybe I'm pretty sure some people still call him scary Terry from football fans so yeah sure why not scary Terry um, yeah my point is Curtis Samuel is taken behind him in uh, Taylor Heineke's eyes. Looking at who's next? Jacoby Myers. If he gets a Sauce Gardner treatment and he's the receiver one, hell no. I'm good. Sauce Gardner's a beast, bro. I, I'm not testing that. I'm good. Not starting Jacoby Myers. Corlin Sunning is Jacksonville. Jacksonville's D isn't solid at all. They're, I think, middle of the pack. If Russell Wilson plays, Corlin Sutton. Fire, fire him up because as much as we love to destroy Russell Wilson, he loves himself some Cortland Sutton. So if Russell Wilson does play, Cortland Sutton is a surefire receiver too. If Russell Wilson doesn't play, I would bench Cortland Sutton if you had the chance. <laughs> I, I'm serious. I, I really would. DeAndre Johnson against Philly and George Pickens against Philly. Low end flex plays. I do like George Pickens and his, his talent and Deontay Johnson after the catch, but it just seems like uh, Pittsburgh's offense as a whole is just struggling. Adam Thielen against Arizona, I think is a nice flex play. Arizona doesn't have a phenomenal D, a good D. More Again, more so middle of the road kind of defense. And I know that they just had a lot of points against uh, the Andy Dalton Saints, but two pick sixes are not consistent. Excuse me, not consistent at all. Uh, Jerry Judy if Russell Wilson plays I would bench him if the backup quarterback plays uh, Brett Ripon, I believe is his name I think it's something like that if he plays I would start Jerry Judy because he seems to be favored by that quarterback Tyler Boyd against Cleveland that could be a real high scoring game that could be a nice flex play for sure I actually would lean towards starting Drake London uh, it's odd because it felt like the first couple weeks, you know, he looked really good. And then it's just like kind of like a little bit of a fall off. So I would I would probably bench until further notice. Wandale absolutely start. He had it looked like every target in the first half, like a second second half. He disappeared more, but the Giants clearly like him. They clearly want him part of the game plan. Wandale looks really nice. I would definitely start him. Hunter Renfro bench Rashad Bateman. If he's not limited, you know, and he actually gets like the okay, like, oh, this guy's good to go, not oh game time decision, question mark, who knows? I would definitely start him. Lamar Jackson needs playmakers. Their offense without him clearly just lacked. I guess what he did what what Sean Bateman provides for the Ravens is he stretches the field, makes keeps the defense modest, can't can't just stop focus on the run i i know he only had four catches 42 yards on his return but he was out for what two three games so no you can't just come out come back and explode romeo dobbs bench aaron Rodgers said on, on the pat mccaff show guys who are constantly making mistakes should be playing i think he was talking about dobbs um mental errors you know he's a rookie it, it happens but i don't think aaron Rodgers is a big fan Paris Campbell, man, if Matt Ryan was starting, I think Paris Campbell would be much higher because two games in a row, really good outings. I don't get how you only have 70 yards on 10 catches, but when you look at how Matt Ryan's shoulder has been, he is just shot. And I know they said, oh, his shoulder is sprained, uh, so we're going to start Sam. Uh, 
if your shoulder's sprain, you still come back late in the season. Clearly, they just say he's done. He, he's washed. Matt Ryan, we're going to tell the media we're not going to play you because of your shoulder, but really everyone knows, including the media, that it's not your shoulder. You're just washed. So Paris Campbell, we'll see what he does in his new quarterback for now. I'd bench him to see how that goes, but I think he's worth definitely the add. I wouldn't start him, but I would definitely have him on your team. Uh, Marquise Goodwin, people are adding him a lot. I'm actually not going to start him. I know DK Metcalf could be out. Tyre Lockett did struggle last week, but... I wouldn't trust Marquise Goodwin to supply a whole lot of um, fantasy points. Garrett Wilson bench. Zach Wilson ain't it, Chief. At least, in, at least in, until further notice. Uh, Michael Gallup bench. Just I, I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Michael Gallup is the biggest, like, most hyped person that's never done anything, <laughs> and it's phenomenal to me because you see a guy and he's, you know, big receiver. He can make you know big plays happen, but it just they don't happen often. So at, at what point are you gonna say, yeah, he's just not producing? And I ended up making a trade in my fantasy league. I traded Najee Harris, Michael Gallup, Jeff Wilson for Tyree Kill. That was before the Christian McCaffrey trade happened. My cousin told me that's a terrible trade. I mean, he didn't say terrible trade, but he's like, nah, you lost the trade for sure. You know, looking back at it, even in the moment, I was like, you're tripping, dude. Michael Gallup. I, I, I pre what I pretty much gave up was Najee Harris for a Tyree kill because Jeff Wilson is not startable. He's not even rostered for a lot of people moving forward. Michael Gallup has done Jack. Um, I pretty much gave him Najee Harris for Tyree kill. No shame in that. Najee has been terrible, at least for his standards. So yeah, killed that trade. Uh, Robert Woods bench to further notice. Uh, Darnell Mooney, same thing. E even if, you know, you were looking at starting him they're playing dallas d dude it's tough josh reynolds could be a start this week um he's actually put it provided really solid numbers like seriously like really solid numbers uh sammy Watkins, bench rondo moore bench Sam mckenzie bench i actually like alan robinson the second this week um they definitely got him going before the buy now they had the buy i think sean McVay knows he for the for the Rams offense to be good, they cannot simply rely on Cooper Cup. They need other players to get involved. I actually do like Allen Robinson this week. Um, you know, watch him put up one catch <laughs> because I said that. But now, seriously, I, I I do like Allen Robinson this week. Oh shoot! All right. So naming our favorite players from one through ten, we got. Okay, I said this in a previous video. You know, not last week, but the week before. Cooper Cup will always be in the top three. So for those reasons, I will not be naming Cooper Cup because if I said Coop, if Cooper Cup was available to name every time, I'm naming Cooper Cup every time because he's just that good. When Cooper Cup is projected to score more than a lot of the quarterbacks in the league, that should say something. I'm not going to say Cooper Cup, even though, yes, obviously, he's the best player to start every single week. Every single week. So anyway, the Cooper cup list list. Um, we're actually going to say Justin Jefferson, easy. Tyree Kill, easy. And you got to say, the, mm, yeah, because Stefan Diggs, obviously he's good and he's going to get his numbers, but he, Jair is going to be lined up against him. So I would say Devontae or Jamar Chase could be easily a coin flip because Jamar Chase is going to have a lot of opportunities where it feels like it's going to be a high scoring game. Same with Devontae. Uh, I'm going to say Devontae Adams three. So we got Jay Jettis, Tyreek, Devontae Adams. You could easily flip that with Jamar. Hopkins is obviously a beast. He's a beast. All these guys are badass names. That's the point of receivers, though. They're just so deep. 11 through 20, we got Amonra, if healthy. Uh, yes, yeah, I believe he is because he didn't actually have a concussion. So, yeah, we're going to say Amonra St. Brown. We're going to say... Chris Olave against Las Vegas. And then we're going to say Mike Evans against Baltimore. I definitely think that's going to be a game that Mike Evans gets a bounce back, uh, that the Buccaneers get to show off the offense a little bit more because Baltimore defense has not been impressive at all. 21 through 30, our three favorite will be um, if Russell was in place, if Russell was in place, Corlin Sutton, if he plays. At two, um, Mari Cooper and three, 
I actually like DJ more this week. Um, 31 through 40. I would say Adam Thielen, Wandale Robinson, and Rashard Bateman. And 41 through 50, we're going to say Josh Reynolds. Um... Josh Reynolds, Rondell Moore, and and I guess I guess oh man yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it at two names I don't even want to say the I mean if I had to if a gun was put to my head I guess I'd say Marquise Goodwin but nah 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 let's just leave it at Rondell Moore. And uh, Josh Reynolds. And, you know what? No, no, no. We're going to stretch this out to 51. And, and uh, Alan Robinson. Those are the three names. Alan Robinson at 51. Uh, Ronda Moore at 49. And um, Josh Reynolds at 47. Because <laughs> I, I, I don't want to say Marquis Goodwin. I don't want that to be on my resume. <laughs> Not that anyone's really counting or wor worried about it. But I try to be as accurate as possible. Keyword try. Anyway, uh, that has been Week 8's Fantasy football rankings um i always have a blast doing these videos i post six times a week I, if i wouldn't be doing it if i didn't have fun if i didn't enjoy what i do and especially some of y'all that be commenting on the videos i appreciate you guys so much keeps me motivated keeps me going to be honest i'm gonna post anyway but that extra motivation does help and it's really cool and it's fun engaging with the community so as always appreciate y'all for watching this has been ollie been different all we've been different and we out.